a quick video tutorial about the Foglite JMX cartridge. First of all, let's point a couple of resources about the JMX cartridge. You have the JMX cartridge guide, as well as a community site article, and a couple of starter models. Basically, if you look at the JMX cartridge guide, you have two options for configuring a JMX agent. Using the application server mechanism, or using the JVM JMX mechanism. In our case, we'll have a look at two examples. One of them is using a WebLogic application server connectivity mechanism, and another example of using the JVM JMX mechanism to connect to a Tomcat server. We switch to a Foglite server. In this environment, I used to have two agents, but the Foglite agent manager is currently in a down state, and this is why both agents are reporting a broken state. What we're going to do is we're going to start from the very beginning, which is deploying the JMX cartridge to a Foglite agent manager that I have running in this environment. As you can see, when I try to create an agent, I get a message saying that the JMX agent package has to be deployed. So we'll deploy the JMX agent package. In this environment, I have a Foglet Agent Manager, a second instance, which I'll deploy the package to. Now that the package was deployed, we can go back to the dashboard and create an agent. We'll create the WebLogic agent first and do a couple of mistakes just to see how we troubleshoot those mistakes. That's our Fallout Agent Manager. We'll choose the Connection Info Assistant, WebLogic 10. This is the correct port, pretty much the administration port. This is the WebLogic Home. Notice that I made a small mistake in the WebLogic Home. I did a little mistake here with the password too, so we'll see how that one plays out. And in this case, we'll create a new server model, call it WLS. And we'll activate the agent once created. And let's see what happens. Looks like our agent was created, but connection has failed. Let's troubleshoot this. Look at the connection log. Looks like the class path does not exist. Keep in mind that I made a mistake with the path for the WebLogic server. Since I made that mistake, the class path is actually incorrect. Let's correct that mistake. And reactivate the agent. Looks like our connection has failed again. Let's look at the log. Well, we know that the user is correct, WebLogic, 
but I wonder if I typed the password wrong, which I actually did. Let's correct that mistake. And retry connection. We are now successfully connected to a WebLogic server. We will now create a JMX agent that will connect to a Tomcat server that has the JMX options and its JVM startup parameters. We will create agent. Connection info assistant. And we'll choose JMX RMI, which is the base mechanism of the JVM from JVM 1.5 or higher. As you can see, all we need is the host name and the port. I'll create a server model just for the sake of example. and create the agent. Our agent was created and is now connected to a Tomcat server. Notice that it says collecting data. Well, there is actually a step missing here. We need to configure the model to tell the JMX agent what to collect. For the sake of example, we'll configure the model on WebLogic. It is pretty much the same for Tomcat. You can click configure model from here, or you can configure model from the bottom part of the screen. In this case, we'll just choose configure server model. What we're going to do next is add root type, which shows us the list of all the endbeans that exist. You can import the server model or a starter model from the community site and the next version of the cartridge will have additional out-of-the-box starter model. But what we'll do at this point is show the process of adding mBeans and adding their properties, attributes, metrics. Let's look for an mBean that has server information. In this case we'll take the one that's called ComBA server. Servers are being inspected right now for the right definition. And let's choose a couple of fields here. This import is a good one. Name is a good one. We can choose additional ones. We will now add those types. Do next. And again next. Now in some cases we want to display name by getting the information from the properties, which is what we'll do here. We'll just copy paste this. Look at the list of properties. Looks like name is a good one. And click finish. One more step that we need to do here is actually define the instances that we are collecting from. In this case we'll choose all available instances. We can now have a look at the data. 
we can look at the data through the Java E monitor or the JMX Explorer. Let's choose the JMX Explorer at this point. Please note that right now we're actually looking at a different Ambient server, so we have to switch to our Ambient server. We can either list or have a structure. At this point in time, you can see my Medrex server is here with the listening port, login time on a millisecond, and additional types of information that we're getting about it. Let's change the time frame. And as you can see, the data is there. Listening port, login time in millisecond, startup mode, listening address, name of the server. At this point, all we have to do is just repeat the process. Let's add additional root types. In the case of WebLogic, typically the ones that are called runtime have interesting information. Let's see if we can have a look at the thread pool. We've got server runtime, we've got server runtime, we've got thread pool runtime, which is actually an interesting one. can add more properties, number of vital threads, number of execute threads, execute thread totals, name of a thread pool, queue length. There's obviously additional types of metrics that are interesting. We'll just add them. And let's see as far as our properties, looks like name can be a good way to get a meaningful name to that mbean. And uppercase N. And let's do finish. Just like we did previously, let's decide which instances are being collected. At this point in time, all available is a good one. Now that we're ready, let's have a look at the Java E monitor and see how that information looks in the Java E monitor. Let's go to our Java E monitor and let's have a look at the list of our servers. Our WebLogic one is the correct one. As you can see, we're getting JVM information. We're also getting the server information. And let's have a look at the thread pool information. Idle count one, total six, Q length zero. At this point, all that is left is repeating this process until we have all the MBs that we're interested in. After creating a server model, you can actually import and export from the JMX cartridge management dashboard. I hope you find this video useful. Thank you very much for your time.